Hey, how we doing? This is going to be the very first installment of a review series that I start to do after every session. You know, when I'm studying my own play and the hands that came up, I uh, decided to start turning that into videos and share that all with you. So we're going to get into a couple different hands here today. Um, right off the bat, I'm just showing you a hand here with aces that is obviously just cooler. It's not very particularly interesting. But I wanted to add it and include it as I talked about this series because I think it sets context for some hands that are later against a particular villain. And I wanted to use this time to say that if you're new to this channel, the idea is to connect with poker players to do big things inside and outside of poker. So you're going to see some advertisements down here along the bottom to connect with. Um, and if you're interested in getting involved, you can find out more in the links. You want to support the channel you can always buy like some merch right here i have like a you know one of my shirts available my pocket ducks so other than that let's talk about some poker hands you saw that very first hand was aces all in preflop there that was a cooler against a, a regular uh, let's move um, a little bit farther ahead to our next hand which is a king king hand and we'll just have to um get into it here. We're down here with Pocket Kings and this is against um, more of a recreational player who is very aggressive with check raising, check raise bluffs. Um, so in this particular spot I wasn't sure how well I played this hand compared to GTO versus sort of exploitively. Um, I think basically most of our range here is just going to be a call and that was one thing I wasn't sure about so I called here and you know, if this poker player here is telling a story after he checks a turn, you know, I don't expect him to check a lot of threes here. Uh, I think he could be check raise bluffing with a lot of low cards that would then create a straight. Uh, and I don't know if he's, I think he's going to be betting a lot for value. I think he's going to get stuck on the turn here with a lot of hands like four, five, ace, five, um, hands like five, six, a turn a pair and a gutter. I also think he has a lot of hands like sevens, eights, nines, tens that are over pairs and then kind of worried that I may have a greater over pair. So I bet the turn um, to get potentially another street of value out of those hands, just kind of build the pot a little bit. I think I'm ahead of a lot of his hands here. And so I bet the turn for a larger sizing and then we get this six of hearts on the river. Uh, I think his range does include some straights, some full houses here, very minimal combinations of those. I, and I also think he has a lot of like sevens, eights, nines, and tens. Um, in this particular spot, I wasn't really sure what to do. This is definitely a study point number one. I wasn't sure if there was a bet size that was good, uh, maybe smaller or all in to look maybe potentially a little bit bluffier, um, you know, representing less hands. So what did I do? Now I checked and showed down against tens. Uh, I wasn't sure if that was a great decision, so let's pull up some GTO and take a look at that. So... I'm going to be betting here a range C bet. Uh, it's definitely preferable. He decides to check raise here. We saw his hand was 10s. 10s love to do that. It's definitely a high check raise spot. This is a high check raise player. I was expecting this. You can see all the other hands here. I gave him a lot of threes uh, in this position. I think that's kind of normal um, for this type of player. And we go to the five of spades turn. And here's where the hand diverges a little bit. Once he polarizes on the flop, we can expect generally uh, on this you know, turn for him to continue to keep barreling a lot. He opts to check here. Uh, in my circumstance, kings becomes a bet um, infrequently, but kings can be a bet, which I did do. He calls the six of hearts river. It's 100% check for him. He doesn't reopen donking. And on my hand, uh, the combinations of kings that I do have, it is showing down here. So I guess GTO-wise, I made kind of a, an okay-ish play there, a frequency play that was fine. Um, I reran the simulation starting from the turn where he has more balance, sort of like check, where he's doing a lot more checking uh, with his over pairs here, you know, his tens and he's betting nines, hands that are just, you know, a little bit more depolarized and versus his polarized hands or he's still continuing to bet. And he when he checks in this circumstance, it is interesting that I do bet slightly more, but in my particular hand um, with my king of spade blocker, that is 100% basically a check here. So playing blocker wise, I would not be betting here. 
on the turn, um, which I did do. So I uh, I thought that was an interesting hand from a GTO perspective. I think story-wise, you know, I think it was kind of obvious. Maybe that he had a lot of potential, um, you know, pairs, sevens, eights, and nines here. That if I was, you know, playing more in tune with my gut, maybe I could have squeezed out more value on the river. Maybe I would have three bet the flop, playing more exploitively. I'm not sure if GTO playing um, balanced here, how balanced I was, and whether it was good to play kings in this balanced manner. Uh, we can see even here again, if I were to bet on the six of heart river, uh, he does have some donks that he can find, but for the most part, kings again just becomes a check to showdown. Interesting hand. Uh, let's move on with the rest of the review. Moving forward to this next hand is an ace-10 offhand here. And this is going to be against the villain that we played that earlier pot with. Um, so that's over here in the upper right. We have ace-10 off. This is going to be a somewhat frequency four bet. Uh, my randomizer is up here in the upper left. Let's see, I got an 89, so we're off to four bet uh, land. And so here we get here on a 6-5-3 flop. Uh, this is where I wasn't sure of my own strategy. I know low boards like this, uh, it's kind of mixed with small bets, which I like to employ. They will check back a lot of aces to protect range, but they can also find some bets as well. I'm thinking to myself, you know, are aces betting here? Would I find a bet with aces? Um, and I do decide that there are some frequency of aces bet here, so I use my small size representing, you know, those big pairs. Uh, the, the three is certainly a blank, and that's good for what I can do. I can continue to barrel, I believe. Um, I'm not exactly sure how my ace of clubs uh, blocker works here, whether I think it becomes a barreling card if we get a club run out. You can see here I make a kind of crazy fold here with nines. This guy is um, playing aggressive as well. But up on table three up here in the corner, uh, we got a seven river. It's essentially a blank. I don't have a lot of hands that really connect with that. I have very low showdown uh, value. Um, you know, my ace is just going to be worse than some of his other aces. So we decide to uh, put a jam in. And we're going to find out what happens here. And then we're going to take a look at that in GTO. And then move on to a few other hands. So we do get the fold. Uh, that does feel pretty good. Uh, that was essentially against the villain, the villain that beat me with the kings. We'd been battling basically across a lot of other tables and a lot of other kind of like three bet, four bet pots today. So, you know, I wasn't sure if that was affecting his play or not. But let's look at the hand real quick in GTO. So on a 6-5-3 rainbow board with a two downsize bet kind of strategy and four bet pots, uh, it's predominantly checking back um, about 70% of the time. We can look at a range... Like I was saying, it does find the small bets here some frequency of the time with aces, with kings, ace-king off. My hand, ace-10 off. Uh, this is essentially my first mistake for the most part for the combinations that I do have. This is a check back. I don't do that, but we can still examine what happens with those combinations. Uh, interestingly enough, this three of spades turn... Oops, excuse me. On the three of spades turn, once we do bet, um, this ace 10 off becomes pretty much a very, very strong uh, bet here. So we're betting it again for a downsize, and we go to a river with the seven of hearts. He checks again to us, and my ace 10 off is essentially um, pretty much always, it's always a jam here. We can see there is some blocker differences where uh, me having, it says a spade here, but it was essentially the club on the board. Um, that nut blocker or that becomes very, very important to shove here and get it in. Uh, so when I do have these combinations of 8-10 and I get to this river, especially with this blo blocker, it's always a shove. And so I did shove, and so that felt good. Uh, it was a very low-frequency play, um, starting from the flop. I didn't know my own strategy that well, but uh, it was important to play that part of my range correctly, uh, which I did for the low-frequency. All right. So moving on to another hand here. This one is kind of just for fun. Um, there is a 10-9 suited hand coming up here. 
1058. Give me a second just to get to it. And so we're here. This is again on table number three in the upper right. We have a recreational in the big blind and a recreational who opens. And I three bet 10 9 suited. We get a cold call and it comes to the flop of queen 7 2. And my equity here is just extremely low. I would say I probably have about 15% equity was my guess at the time. Um, so checking back the flop, letting the hand develop a little bit. The king is an interesting card. Maybe it's one I can represent. Um, I opt to basically kind of give up on this hand as it was played out. And we get to the queen river here. So final board, queen 7-2, king, queen with the backdoor draws coming in. I uh, basically considered bluffing here. I wasn't exactly sure what I'd be representing. Um, maybe like a queen jack type hand uh, is my best value hand here. Um, but I had basically given up on the pot. You can see a check here. It just didn't really make sense to me. And <laughs> I got shipped that pot with 10 high. So kind of wild. Uh, I was not expecting that. That was a nice gift of a hand um, from that session. So let's move on ahead now to this next hand, which happens. Uh, this is a king's spot, all in preflop, or at least it should be. Maybe it shouldn't be. Again, this is happening on table three. I'm going to walk you through my logic here. We have kings. Uh, good regular is about to three bet him after timing down for a little bit. Makes a pretty hefty three bet there. This guy opens very infrequently. His open under the gun is like 4%. So I think he's at basically at the top of his range, like queens plus. Um, I don't even know if he opens ace king for that size. I usually find that to be pocket pairs when they open a little bit larger with essentially a snap jam and a snap jam on top. I fold king's preflop. And I wasn't sure about that. Uh, <laughs> I just wasn't sure about that. I thought under the gun was certainly better with the snap call. Um, it was just a weird spot. I don't, I don't know exactly. I misranged here. I guess I got a little lucky that I didn't run into quads, but weird hand. One of the very few times I'm ever going to fold kings there preflop, and I did so horribly incorrectly, I guess, but the results were, you know, good, I guess. And we're going to move on to a last hand here. Um, this one is... Coming up at 11.16, this is a hand that is also against a recreational player where we can see it down here. I have ace-nine suited. I raise out of the small blind to an under-the-gun limp. My strategy here is generally to fire a lot of range bets for small. I do so, and this is kind of where poker becomes like telling a story. Uh, he's raising here. He raises me a lot. I think he can have a lot of hands that'll test me out with here, especially to my small range C-bet size, uh, you'd want to apply pressure with. I want to tell the story that I'm really strong here, and I kind of deviate from what is most likely a GTO call with this particular hand, and I opt to fire in a large 3-bet here. Or, And I think the 10 on the turn is essentially the worst, the worst turn in the deck uh, my ability to represent an overpair is greatly diminished here, or at least I would check to protect those overpairs. And when he bets this downsize, I'm not exactly sure what he's doing. To me, it seems a lot like he has a 10, but he could also be applying pressure with other types of hands. Um, I have the 9 and the Ace, which are great blockers to a 10 here, to 10 combinations that he may have, especially the raising one on the flop. Um, you would think like an Ace-10 would be his strongest raise there. So... We get to the turn here. I check call to the downsize bet. I think maybe I could lead block there, but I don't mind the check call to his size. And we get to the six river, which in my mind is pretty innocuous. Um, I don't think he has a lot of hands that benefit by that six. Um, nine, seven being the only kind of really one. And I block one of the nines there. And we come to a decision where we're trying to actually show down. I think my ace high may be good. I think he may have to bluff here with all of his potential misses, hands like jack nine, queen jack, um, other weird diamonds. When he bets this size, that's not quite all in. 
uh, threw me for a bit of a loop. Uh, he left money behind on the table, and I wasn't sure what story he was telling. Is he trying to go to call, or is he trying to look strong and kind of get a fold without risking it all, um, without psychologically putting me all in? And basically, I thought about this for quite a long time. I'm going to make a call here with ace high on the river, and I got smoked by Tripp's top kicker. Uh, looking back at that hand, it's not really justifiable. I think I have... You know, it's not justifiable through GTO, but once I started deviating there, I was trying to figure out the story, and obviously it was tens or bust uh, in my mind. And when I had good blockers there, do I thought which were his best tens, I decided to make a call. And so that was the first time I did this review video. I hope it was helpful. It was good for me for studying. I'm going to start doing more of these just to create more content. Uh, if you enjoyed it, you know, like, share, subscribe, hit up my website for access to my Discord, buy some merch like this Sweet Pocket Ducks shirt, and I appreciate you watching today. Thanks very much.